TikTok took things too far again. What else is new? That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Small Entertainment. And I've had a couple of people ask me to cover the West Elm Caleb situation over on TikTok. And I kept telling them that it made me uncomfortable because it did. I thought this whole thing was a bit too mob mentality witch hunt. I thought it was a bit over the top. I said that if I were to make a video on it, it would be about the response around these women sharing their stories. And the only reason I'm making this video now is because it fits in perfectly with this Axel situation and Juilliard, because both of these situations are examples of TikTok taking things too far. One is rewarding, I'm sorry, mediocrity. <laughs> and the other is under the guise of feminism, girl power, I think this video is gonna be different from my last too far video. My last too far video focused mainly on TikTok's uh, mentality around active true crime cases and then trying to turn someone dancing into like a villain and an evil person. And that is not what this is. This is taking things too far, but that was way more serious. This is, I don't wanna say less serious because it implies that it's not serious. Like someone's name and face are being put out there in a way that I don't think is quite fair and is being mocked and used to uh, market uh, businesses and make money. I don't know, I'm trying to think of the word. Like I don't like it, but it's not making my skin crawl and as and is as exploitative as treating active true crime cases involving living victims as if it was a podcast unfolding before your eyes. You know, I think that there's two different levels of seriousness. Both can be serious, but they're not in the same vein of serious. I also wanna point out for this West Elm Caleb situation that I am not in any way trying to vilify the women sharing their stories. This is a shared experience that they had with this guy and you have a right to share your experiences even if it happened with someone else. I were to go on a date with someone tomorrow and they wanted to speak about how I acted on this date, that's part of their experience. They went on a date with me. They have the right to share that story because they are part of that story. So that, I, I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but I am not vilifying these women for sharing their stories with this Caleb person. I think certain elements of it are not that deep. And also the internet's co-opting of this as the new villain of the month, I think is a little excessive. And that's my main take on that. So we're gonna start with West on Caleb and then go into the Axel stuff, because the Axel stuff is a different level of insanity. So West Elm Caleb came up on TikTok. I actually got the original first video from the original creator talking about West Elm Caleb. Um, so basically she shared her story on going on a date with this guy named Caleb, who was tall. And that was it. Had a good date. And then he was like, he was like, you'll never see me again. And like, didn't get a second date. And a lot of people were apparently commenting and DMing this girl saying, oh, is this West Elm Caleb? And then she got a DM from another guy named Caleb who was like, I'm also tall and named Caleb, like sliding into her DMs. <sighs> if any of this is true, I'm not doubting. Okay, I'm not doubting the validity of these girls' stories. I do think that some people are jumping on the bandwagon because at a certain point, part of the element of the lore, sounds so bad, the lore of Caleb is that he eventually like unmatches you on Hinge or something. And I'm not personally on Hinge. I'm on Tinder because um, I don't have standards. <laughs> it's my understanding that when you unmatch, like you kind of lose access to those messages, or at least that's my experience with other dating apps. I don't know if that's the situation on Hinge. So the unmatching element of the story kind of makes it so that anyone can claim that they've been matched and then unmatched by Caleb. And so anyone can kind of add on and be like, this also happened to me. I think the number of women that this has allegedly uh, happened to or that have allegedly matched or been ghosted by or been in contact with in any capacity with Caleb has been greatly exaggerated. That is my belief because some of these people show screenshots, they show messages, very clear evidence. Other people, they're speaking very generally and there is zero evidence. I'm not saying that to share your story, you have to have evidence. Receipts are not required to share your story, but some of the details are very vague in some of these stories. And that is where I, I have questions. And again, the word love bombing gets thrown around a lot in these. And some of the messages that people are like, this is him love bombing me. Some of them are a little heavy, but most of it's just flirting. Like love bombing is a very specific type of abuse. 
and it's sustained and there's things to, let me read the definition god damn it love bombing is an attempt to influence a person by demonstrations of attention and affection it can be used in different ways and either positive or negative purposes psychologists have identified love bombing as part of a cycle of abuse and have warned against it some of the comments that girls are pointing to as if they are like oh i'm being love bombed I don't know. I, mm, I'm i trying to think of the wording here for why I have issues with the word love bombing being thrown around. Um, I showed on the podcast that I've experienced love bombing, not from a relationship, from a parental figure that I was being abused by. Super fun times. Someone saying, I have a good feeling about you is not the same thing as, God, I'm trying to think of the, I'm really trying to think of the wording here. See, now I'm getting uncomfortable. This is why I'm in therapy. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the proper wording here. Cause again, I don't want to discredit any of these girls experiences, but I don't think that someone flirting and actively trying to like get in your pants is the same thing as love bombing. I just, I don't think so. And that's my opinion. And you can absolutely disagree with me, but I just, some of these girls are just saying like, oh, he love bombed me and they're not giving any examples. And it just seems like it's kind of being thrown around in the same way that the word gaslight has been thrown around, especially lately in the cultural, space. I don't know if it applies here, but also at the same time, love bombing. Yes, it can point to a cycle of abuse, but I mean, I don't know. It's <sighs> me. This is not going to be the same as the last video. I'm not as uncomfortable with this topic. Me speaks about something for more than two seconds. Ugh. I was like, this is gonna be a fun video. We're gonna rip into stuff. No, it's not. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> I just think the claims of love bombing, I think some of them are greatly exaggerated. I think that no one owes you a second date. You can think a date went so well. It does not matter. No one owes you seeing you a second time. You don't owe anyone a second date. They don't owe you sex. You don't owe them sex. They don't owe you closure technically, and you don't owe them closure. At the end of the day, everyone's an adult. It sucks sometimes, and it can make you feel shitty and confused and a little lost but that's not the same thing as sustained abuse or abuse in general. It's just someone being a dick and a player. It's not gonna feel good, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are a violent, abusive person. The issue with the, the Caleb thing is that it's one thing for women to share their stories. It's another thing for, and I think this is something that I think we see a lot more of. We saw, okay, I talked about the couch guy incident. I have one opinion. Some people have been conflating the two, like, oh, this is exactly like with couch guy. And I personally disagree. Couch Guy has come out and made a statement. Um, he had allegedly made his own TikTok accounts and was addressing things beforehand. I think that the Caleb stuff is worse than the Couch Guy stuff, personally, because K uh, Caleb matched these girls on Hinge, went on a couple of dates with them, maybe slept with a few of them, and then broke them off, maybe copied and pasted goodbye messages. Like someone, I don't know, someone dating a lot of people in and of itself is a shitty move, but it's not criminal. The response to the response of the West Elm Caleb thing is also insane. It's like what I talked about with the response to Sabrina, where people would make videos defending her and then people would then vilify the person defending her in a very insane way. Like you're helping them abduct people and all this stuff when none of that was ever true. And it's just, it seems like that's what this is again. If you speak about this, then it's you're anti-women or you're not a feminist or this is victim blaming. And I, that's not what this is. The fact that there is no room for nuance or criticism or asking questions because I've decided I'm not on the right side of the mob or whatever, I don't think that's fair in any regard. And I think that that leads to lack of change in social settings or lack of progress in a dialogue or a conversation. Articles about this situation and about these women sharing their stories and then the response from brands, like Ruggable, I think the video got taken down because I tried sharing this with my dad because I was trying to explain this to uh, my father and he was very confused. And so I sent him something from Ruggable that was like, none of these rugs were designed by West Elm Caleb. Thank God. Either West Elm got mad at them for using their name in their advertisement, which I'm not sure exactly what the deal is there, or it was taken down by the marketing team or whatever. And they were like, hey, what the fuck is wrong with you? But eventually the video was taken down. I think it's around somewhere. I'm sure you can find it. 
but not cool, Keepler app, which I think is supposed to try to be a, a proper safe dating app or something. Like it's the new age of dating apps. Red flags, 6'4", mustache, furniture designer. There's no, if this was an ad for the Keepler app, you did a shitty job. Your brand is nowhere near this advertisement whatsoever. I skipped past my couch guy comparison, so let me fix that. Um, couch guy, I think is not as bad as the Caleb situation because the couch guy situation, it was posted by his girlfriend. If he genuinely wanted her to take the video down, he could have asked her to do that. And yes, there's this whole thing. It's their relationship, whatever. But it was posted by them, by his girlfriend to the internet. They wanted to take it down. They could take it down. They took every opportunity they could to respond to people and at one point made merch. Like there was this whole thing. Okay. She was making videos on it. His friends were making videos on it. He was just clearly, I don't know, I am of the opinion that he was just not comfortable on camera and that's where it all came out. He has since made like a tell-all for I think Slate, I'll link it down below if anyone wants, where he did like a whole essay or whatever. Caleb did not do any of that. He is not posting these videos. He is not a part of these videos. He is not, it seems like actively speaking to any of these women that have posted information about him. And I wanna point out that none of the original women are sharing his photo. Other people have kind of co-opted it and started sharing the photos. And since then, more women that have had relationships with him have shared messages, snelfies he sent of them, things like that, like a lot of things like that. I think this is worse than the couch guy situation, because this is someone who is not choosing to actively be online. And again, neither was couch guy, it was his girlfriend, but still there was lines of connection there that just are not there with the Caleb situation. And personally, I do have an issue when I see people sharing like photos from people's dating profiles and things like that on TikTok. I do find the voice messages from Hinge funny um, when people share those. It's another thing when people share the name of the profile picture associated with those, that's different. Consenting to be a part of a dating app and wanting to meet people and date or talk to someone is not the same thing as consenting to be a part of a TikTok video. That's my view on that. I don't know how to further explain that. So that's why I think that this situation is worse than the couch guy situation. I mean, people were talking about couch guy too. I mean, the, the response is fairly similar. I think there's way more brands co-opting this though with the Caleb stuff. But again, you already have a brand built into it where West Elm is part of the title. It's like Couch Guy, his name was not part of it originally. You know, like Couch Guy is one thing. West Elm Caleb is very targeted. I don't like it. I don't like it. I think it makes me uncomfortable. Um, I'm sure eventually, we'll, I don't know. Will he say something? I'm trying to think if that's even a smart thing for him to do at this point. I think he has every right to say something. He has every right to reply and say something. These women have their rights to share their stories, but I also don't think that dating multiple people when you're not in an exclusive relationship is a criminal act. Hell, cheating, I don't think is a criminal act. It's not good, it's shitty, but it's not a criminal act. I, this is a mess, this is a mess. Anyway, let's talk about Axel, that's more fun. So Axel is a new New Yorker, fairly new. Um, he originally went viral for living in a doggy crate of an apartment. And by that, I mean, I'm fairly certain my pen and crate set up for Hermes is bigger than his apartment. I've seen a lot of talk back and forth about whether or not he needs to live in this apartment or not, or whether or not he could afford a bigger apartment, or if he actually secretly has money and secretly could be affording more. And I don't think there's anything wrong with living actively below your means. I could have a nicer apartment. I like this one. You know, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. In fact, I think it's the smarter thing. And I think it's incredibly difficult to do in New York. People uh, compare New York and LA housing and the apartment rent market and all of that. I don't think they're comparable. I think New York situation is way worse right now in their affordable housing and all of that. Like even just like, I got a pandemic rate for this apartment and it only went up a hundred dollars for my second year of living here. Meanwhile, people in New York, they're seeing over a thousand dollars difference in their rents. Like it's just not the same. It really isn't. The thing about Axel is that it's one thing to live below your means. It's another thing to live below your means and then actively portray as if you aren't living below your means. You know, it's one thing to save money. It's another thing to cosplay as poor. I have no proof about his actual financial status. I don't, but I'm seeing red flags in this situation. He got went viral for living in a shoebox. Going back and watching the rest of his videos, I think it's very telling the tone that he's using. Forced authenticity in my view. Then out of nowhere, people, he was like, I actually came out to New York because it is some of the best acting schools in the country. And I have an audition for Juilliard, 
later this week or something. Did it over Zoom. Apparently he butchered doing an accent or something, which like the way he described it, it sounds like he butchered his audition. Juilliard is the world leader in performing arts education. The thing about Juilliard, it's a very hard school to get into. I think it has, like I heard the number going around wasn't, yeah, they have an acceptance rate between five and 8%. It is difficult to get into Juilliard. That is not new. Axel is not the only one who has been denied from Juilliard probably that day, let alone that week. He's not the only TikToker that we know who has been denied from Juilliard. And I'll talk about that in a second. Axel's fans who have never seen this man act a day in their lives, unless you count the performative nature of some of his TikToks. If you don't count that, then they've never seen him act. They took it upon themselves to review Juilliard, cancel Juilliard, threatened Juilliard. He had every opportunity to re-audition in the future. Now with the response from TikTok, one all you've gotten is he's probably blacklisted from ever applying or going to Juilliard. Let in my boy Axel, he deserves better. Let my boy in, he's Spider-Man, the king of New York. Let Axel in. Get Axel in 2022. You're gonna regret it when that man wins an Oscar. See, some of this I think is a joke. Do they genuinely think he's gonna be Spider-Man? Tom Holland, who has been acting since he was a fucking fetus. Axel, who doesn't know what Shakespeare is. <laughs> I mean, come on, like, let's be realistic here. See, people keep saying he's cute. I don't find him attractive, but that's just me. I'm not trying to yuck someone's yum. I'm just like, what's going on? And now he has the Cameron Dallas haircut. And now I see the resemblance to him and Cameron Dallas. And I think that's, that what's, that's what makes me think all these people are 13 that are commenting this stuff because this is insane. This does seem like something MagCon fans would do to be fair. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so he didn't get into Juilliard. That apparently means that TikTok has the right to avenge him. There were some other creators on TikTok who spoke about the situation about how Axel not getting into Juilliard does not make him special. I think Kyle Prue did not say this, but he was like, I actually auditioned for Juilliard as well. And he did an in-person audition because it was years ago when they were still doing that. Right now, everything's over Zoom because of COVID. He said that the person running the audition said, everyone who got in is on this sheet of paper and stuck the piece of paper to the wall and walked away. And apparently the paper was blank but she like did that so everyone would sprint to the wall and none of them got it. <laughs> I find that hilarious. That's, it's, it's fucked up crushing people's dreams, but also at the same time, that's almost, that's some bullshit. <laughs> I can understand the vitriol. If Axel was doing anything remotely that would show that he was a good actor and that warranted him getting into Juilliard because you just finding him cute is not enough to warrant getting into Juilliard. Him having followers on TikTok is not enough to warrant getting into Juilliard. Like, I don't know, if he did skits on TikTok, if he had like a skit show that he did or he did bits, something that like implied that he at all could stay in character for more than three seconds, I don't know, is something that warranted you believing that he had earned or deserved to get into one of the most prestige, the most prestigious acting school in the country. Again, it's TikTok taking things too far in a way that's insane. Um, anyway, Axel's fine. If anyone's like, oh, but he didn't get into Juilliard, his dreams are crushed. It seems like he had this dream a month ago and then now it's like a whole thing. Good for him, I guess, for finding his purpose in life and having a dash, but anyway, he's fine. He has like a modeling contract now, he's fine. The Hype House is trying to recruit him. Allegedly, it sounds like he apparently has like a bunch of PR people behind him. He went to Vinny Hacker's NFT party in LA like not too long long ago. I'm calling shenanigans. Okay. There's a lot, they're not swell shenanigans, but there's a lot of shenanigans around this Axel situation. And I don't know. It just sounds like the whole getting rejected from Juilliard is part of like his origin story for his acting career. Like that's what it sounds like. Like this is like either, maybe this guy is incredibly talented and he is super popular or whatever. And has all these acting chops. This feels like it was designed to purposely be a footnote in his story on IMDb. Like after being rejected from Juilliard, he got cast as uh, Romeo. I don't fucking know, someone. Another creator, God, what's his name? I made a post about not getting to Juilliard and a bunch of Axel Weber fans started attacking me in my Instagram. And I posted a video talking about like this one specific DM, but it keeps getting taken down. So I'm just gonna say it. The Axel Weber fan page messaged me saying, so sorry you didn't get into Juilliard, but when, <laughs> but when Axel Weber <laughs> eventually becomes Peter Parker, 
<laughs> you can be his POC best friend, you fat fuck. <laughs> These people have to be 14. Like, they have to be literal children. Like, there's no other example. One that's not okay ever, and I'm hoping you understand that. Don't send shit. Like, they do it. insane. Axel, I'm hoping you do actually have some form of a talent uh, other than the people on the internet finding you attractive, because I've seen that ship crash and burn before. I hope you have more going for you than just that and living in a shoebox. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Um, what are your thoughts on the West Elm Caleb situation? What are your thoughts on the Axel situation? Do you think that this is all a PR move on his part? Do you think that maybe all of this is real, but it's just being very clearly packaged to be courted by various internet groups and or celebrities? Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, The Swell Shenanigans Podcast. New episodes every Wednesday. Reminder, I have merch like that mug back there. And that'll all be linked down below. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like support my Patreon, that'll be also be linked down below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. I mean, I guess the title of this video could just be, it's not that deep. I mean, Axel not getting into Juilliard is not the same thing as like people trying to ruin this man on social media because he dated multiple women at the same time or was actively dating. Um, but I mean, we could call it, it's not that deep because the uh, culture surrounding these things, the mob surrounding these things are insane. Thank you, Adri, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Devin, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Feckless, Hopeless, Hollow, Ducker, Ray, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew S, Meme, Lord the Red, Michael, Michael, J, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tosh, the Timothy, Tom, Wendy, William, Zendry, Zwing.